this meeting is being recorded. <laughs> That's new. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to. I mean, I feel, I feel like the ankle tag conversation we had a minute ago is quite realistic, given that introduction. Yeah. I mean, like a police are being interviewed. Again. <laughs> 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 so, welcome back to another episode of Night's Nuggets. Um, this is a short and sharp episode today because we've not been on it for a month because mostly my timing is terrible. Um, and we've both got to disappear in about 15 minutes or so. But we have nuggets to share. So, I am joined as usual by my glamorous assistant, Mr. Other Charlie. He's had, oh. had his hair cut again since lockdown eased. Um, yeah. He's also the one that knows a lot about stuff. I'm the one that talks a lot about stuff. So <laughs> he talks a lot. We didn't know much. He talks yeah, a lot. A lot of rubbish. It's yeah, a lot of rubbish. Some of that rubbish is true. Most of it's rubbish. Anything about nutrition is true. Any of the stuff about how great I am is generally false. I feel like being very modest. But anyway, as we were told by your Siri or whatever it was, this meeting is being recorded. So we should probably get on and do some stuff because this is going to get pushed out. Um. I have a question for you, Charlie. So it's a thing I thought I knew a little bit about and I have since read studies that have contradicted each other and now I don't know where I sit. So I figured this is a question for a nutritional mind such as yourself. And that is the effects of vitamin D supplements on strength and hypertrophy. Um, I think this is especially prominent. Basically, the reason I started reading on this is someone asked me about vitamin D that we absorb from sunlight versus vitamin D we'll get from supplementation because now we've had our week of sunshine in the UK. Um, the basic said, if I had enough sunshine in the week that I don't have to take vitamin D supplementation anymore, and I couldn't give an answer for that one. But then I fell down a rabbit hole of research. And I don't actually know the effects of vitamin D on strength and hypertrophy anymore. So I figured that you could shed some light on that because that's the thing you're good at. So let's start there with some actual information. Yeah. So in answer, the short answer to your question, of which there is a really long answer, is we don't really know how vitamin D affects muscle. There is some research, like you said, and it's a little bit contradictory, which is, which sounds rubbish, but that's completely normal for research. And that every time we research something, we're looking at a different population or a different measure of vitamin D or a different dose of vitamin D in a different cell, part of the cell, part of the body, whole body. And each time we look at it, we look at some difference, we get different results, and we try and amalgamate all of that to look at is there any difference in the outcome we're after or not? Um, and some of the research says that yes it has an effect probably more of the like in the cell stuff so in vitro stuff where we're looking in cells particularly at certain like parts of remodeling of muscles so at the cellular level how muscle changes does vitamin D have an effect on those things and it seems to sometimes probably more often than not when we extrapolate that to the whole person and we just do it in people, throw some vitamin D down someone's throat, 12 weeks of strength training, does it change their muscle mass? Doesn't seem to as much. Now, there's all sorts of different factors with that. A prime example of that is 12 weeks of strength training in a study is not necessarily the same as 12 weeks strength training in real life. There's that much control. You have to control for the individual you have control for the limitations of the research so the lab might only have squat rack for example they might only have leg press and dumbbells they might only have certain things so you can't say that actually if i give it to you as an olympic lifter or as a strong man or as someone else you wouldn't get different results that's how complicated research is that's what people don't get is that they just go well does it work or not and when we say it depends drink um then they don't really understand just how nuanced that is but on the whole, I don't think there is enough research to show it have a negative effect. I don't think, and I don't really see a rationale for why it would as well. So on the whole, taking it anyway is going to be a good thing. It might have a small impact. It might be a greater impact in older people, um, but we don't really know. My hypothesis would be small positive effects on strength and hypertrophy. But it's not going to be like the, oh, he was all right until he took vitamin D. Now, fuck me, look at the man. Yeah. And it's, it's not going to be that. Yeah. This trend that you can buy on the barrel, it's basically what it is. Yeah, it's sort of, I wouldn't confuse it with testosterone in terms of what's this going to do to my gains, but it might have a small effect. 
got said gains. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, that's, that's kind of where I came to before I started reading. <laughs> <laughs> and then I started reading and it all went wrong. Um, but yeah, you made an interesting point in that. And it's, it's the, the research point. I say obviously like it's obvious. It isn't. Sometimes I read stuff. You wouldn't believe that to listen to me or chat to me normally. Um, or even look at you. I said, no. oh, look at me. No, you wouldn't believe I could read. It's why I'm quite good as a PT. I'm the personal trainer that reads on that yeah. one. Um, as opposed to one that looks pretty. Yeah. I, I don't. But, like, I read quite a lot. And um, like a lot of the time with research is that kind of people say, well, you've read science, therefore it must be black or white. And you're like, well, ah, nope. So there's an awful lot of it depends. I think you can get a lot of definite. You can get a lot of absolutes from science and research depending on the topic of which I'm not going to delve into now because that's a, that's a whole tin of worms we can open. But when it comes to this sort of stuff, like you said, there's, there's so many variables that go into it. So the question I was asked is a bit of a bullshit question in that will taking vitamin D make me stronger or will being out in the sun give me enough vitamin D to make me stronger? I'm going to like, just go train and eat stuff. It's probably going to be the best way to do that. And then the vitamin D is kind of not superfluous, but the, bit, the vitamin D is a thing. Just take that on the back. Like they, they, were, they were advised to take vitamin D supplements some time ago. So they do anyway. Mm -hmm. um, well, don't just knock a prescription on the edge because you think you're getting outside a bit more. I don't yeah. know that's how it works. It's probably a conversation with your doctor or the, whoever wants to prescribe the vitamin D to you. Um, but yeah, like I said, I just sort of fell into a bit of a rabbit hole of research. And my original thought was, yeah, it's not going to do any harm. Um, mm. I'd say like small marginal gains are great. Um, but then there was a bunch of papers contradicting that and saying actually they do next to nothing or anything like that. So it's an interesting point. So I thought I'd ask you and you've, you've basically echoed my answer, <laughs> which is wonderful. It means we're on the same wavelength. It means we agree with each other. Therefore, we're both right. Because you're right. Yes. in 2021, if you disagree with someone, you're wrong because their opinion is right and they got offended because you disagreed with them. Or you can disagree with anything and just cancel someone because you don't agree with them. That's True. also that's valid as well. 100%. That's exactly how it works. Yeah. Um, that's how research works, by the way. So if you disagree with science, science no longer works. Mm. Fact. That's exactly how it works. Unless you publish a book that just ignores science. That's the only way around it. Yeah. If you just publish like a, a carbs are bad book as a doctor with no nutrition training, that's fine because you've not tried to embrace science in the first place. Yeah. Or like supplement level will buy that. Carrot. That's also bullshit from a you've, yeah. you know, your, your carbs are bad book is nutrition. Supple leopard is my equivalent of carbs are bad. Yeah. Now I can get in the bin. Um, but yeah, so interestingly enough, research isn't always concise. No, nah, concise is the wrong word. Isn't always absolute. I mean, that's really important. Um, actually, which leads us nicely into our next topic, which is kind of the comparison thing. So, Johnny and I had a, a brief conversation the other day. And by a brief conversation, it was about four messages on Instagram expressing our utter disdain for people comparing themselves to either previous themselves or like other people and that kind of thing. Um, and again, this kind of goes a little bit into psych a little bit, a lot of bit into psychology and like the research around psychology and behavior and that sort of stuff. Um, which again is very much Charlie Beeston topic, more of the more over than a Charlie Knight topic. My my behaviour is: Can you pick up the heavy thing? No. Do you want to pick up the heavy thing? Yes. Let's train you to pick up the heavy thing. That's my psychology. Um, Charlie's is a lot more soft and well thought out than mine. Mine's a little bit more caveman psychology. But the comparison thing is really interesting. So I'm guilty of this myself: is comparing myself to past self. So I cast my mind back some time and I had like a 380 deadlift. I was strong as balls and like just everything was fine. I was invincible. And then I'm now 33 and I'm somewhat injured and I've got a few little bits and pieces that don't work anymore. Long story short, I don't have a 380 deadlift anymore. And I'm now at risk of being that guy, you know, that I used to guy. When I was your age, like that. But realistically, no one gives a shit. But then I get pissed off at myself that I can't put 300 kilos on a bar and pick it up anymore. And I'm comparing myself to what I was 10 years ago before, one, before life happens, two, before injuries and surgeries happen, three, before just general wear and tear happens. Um, so you make those comparisons. And personally speaking, I make those comparisons. I get really pissed off with myself. And then I go away and I work with myself and go, actually, you're doing all right, considering everything that I've gone through and all the injuries and stuff, I'm still able to pick up stuff. So the comparison's there to be made, but understanding that you're probably not going to be where you were 10 12, 13, 14, 15, 20, 30 years ago is also very important. Um, 
that's extraordinarily anecdotal because that was a story all about me. And obviously that pod, this podcast is all about me. So let's talk about me. Um, but that's enough about me. Let's talk about you. What do you think about me? What do I think about you? Oh, awful. <laughs> First of all, when you said I did 380 deadlift 380, I really liked the idea of you spinning around in a full circle, doing like a 360 and then a little bit more. Yeah. That's how you deadlift. So you deadlift while rotating fully. Yeah. The, pyramid. yeah. the weight itself was really light. <laughs> I could just spin really quickly. <laughs> literally the best mental image right now. It's like, you know, um, you know Black Swan from Natalie Portman? Yeah. Put me in that leotard. Fucking smashed it. And I'll feel a little bit ill. <laughs> <laughs> but there we go. Um, yeah, I think this, I messaged you about this because I I think I'd just been at the gym when we messaged on Instagram. And I am by no means a lifter, like not even in normal gym world, let alone in your strong world. But I used to bench probably like at my absolute best, about 115, 120 for rep. So not, not numbers that like, You'd be going home to tell your mum about, because um, I'd already told her. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but and then I was at the gym. Obviously, I didn't really train over lockdown. I'm not a. I think we've said this before. I'm not a bands and burpees kind of gal at home. Yeah. So I just didn't train. And then I was back for about two weeks. Broke a rib. Had done four weeks out. Knackered my shoulder a bit. So I was rehabbing that. And now I'm only starting lifting again. And I benched 50 kilos for eight reps, and it felt like the old 100 kilos before. Nice. Um, and it, I almost fell into the trap of, like, fuck me, you are weak. Like, you're embarrassing human. Um, and just, like, giving myself 20 minutes of drop dead. <laughs> Luckily, over the past year or so, I've worked a lot on being more compassionate to myself and understanding that we can't compare to olders. Point is anyway, because like one, I got a valid reason for not being as strong in that I haven't lifted like I used to for a long period of time. So why why do I am I arrogant enough to think I'd suddenly be that? Two, who gives a fuck? Like why why am I comparing to old me? Like it, it genuinely does not serve a purpose at all. Three, really, I was probably less happy than I am now, so I'd have rather bench 120 kilos as a miserable fuck than I would 50 kilos as quite a happy bloke, nice job and life and stuff. Why does it matter? I think putting into perspective a little bit and just going, actually, it doesn't really matter. All the fact that I've benched that much before tells me is that I probably can do it again with the same amount of training and time. Maybe I can go past that. Maybe that's going to be my motivation. But I really just don't see my old performances as motivation to train differently now or to try and get back to a point. Like, I just don't... It's a really weird one when we're talking about, like you were saying anecdotally, I don't compare myself to old me. They, no matter what year or what iteration of me it was, it doesn't feel like the same person because I've changed quite a lot over a period of time. So it's not like... Um, comparing me to old me it'd be like comparing me to a different boat so I don't see any value in it and I just stopped doing it and I'm genuinely I did it I stopped doing it in pretty much every, every area of my life and I'm much happier for it I think it's as detrimental a lot of the time as comparing to other people 100% because we always say well, don't compare to other people because you've not had whatever they've had going through to so the Tiger Woods example which I might have given on here before insanely insanely successful but Growing up, his dad used to abuse him so to prepare him to play golf. So he used to like racially abuse him, call him every name under the sun, treat him horrendously. They used to have a safe word. Imagine that with your dad. A safe word that if he said it, he'd stop. And he never said it. He was just abused him for years. He's ridiculously successful, obviously with his own problems away from golf. But people saying, like, oh, I'd love to be Tiger Woods. Like, Would you? Would you yeah. want to trade what you've got for that upbringing just for that? I wouldn't. Um, so we can't compare to other people because they're so different to us. But I always think I can't compare to old me because they're so different to me. Like how many things have happened in the last five years to me to make me different? What's the point in comparing to old me where all those things hadn't happened to them, so they were going to be different? So, yeah, I just think it's futile to make any sort of comparison. I think living too far in the past or in the present is not particularly healthy, so I try not to do either as much as possible. Yeah. 
I hundred percent agree with that. It's it's a real. I'm I'm incredibly guilty of doing this, and still, like, I'm I'm not as what's the word stoic as yourself in that respect. Um, I still really struggle with it because obviously, you know, my whole thing here is my ego says I like to be the strong guy. Mm. So that's my thing. I don't care that I haven't got a six pack. I don't care that I can't run hundred meters in less than eleven seconds. I don't give a shit. I want to pick up more than you. That's what my ego says. And I'm kind of coming round to the air that I'm not that anymore. I can't do that anymore. Like there's a shitload of people that are way stronger than me, and that's really cool. Like my kind of competitive days are done, which is fine, but I'm kind of coming around to that as a thing. Um, I'm very fortunate that I've been able to side shuffle that into what I do for a job. So now I spend my day at the barn making other people really fucking strong, but getting them to do it right. Mm-hmm. So where I fell foul was when I was really strong, I didn't have a coach. I just kind of trained myself through with what little information I had in my head at the time and got really, really strong, got really, really quickly there and then destroyed myself getting there and just had tons of injuries, loads of setbacks, recovery was poor, like all that kind of stuff. Um, so now in hindsight, if I could train myself, if I know now what I know now, but I was 10 years ago, it'd be a very different thing. I'd still build up to the 380 deadlift. I'd probably have got to the 400 deadlift before I broke my back. But sort of getting there would have been a much slower route. Um, And I think one of the best quotes, I guess, one of the best things I heard, it was, um, I forget who said it now. It was someone I heard, it was irrelevant who said it. But it's like ruling this for a long time. So like, not a short time. If you do a thing, I love strength sports. Strongman powerlifting, weightlifting, I just enjoy the sports and playing with bars and heavy shit and lifting and moving things. I really, really enjoy it. So for me, I want to do this until I die. I don't just want to get really strong for a year, go and smash a bunch of targets, hit a load of competitions, win a load of medals, and then never do it again. Um, Because I enjoy it. If my goal was to set out and do a load of stuff in a really short amount of time, because I fucking hated it, but I needed to do it for some reason, and that's different, but then I'd argue why you're doing it in the first place. Um, so again, sort of sticking on the softer aspects of things, like if it doesn't bring you any sort of joy, just don't bother with it. Unless you're, like, unless you're self-employed and you've got to do tax, that's important. That brings no one joy, but you have to do that. Like pay your taxes. Yeah. That's important. But in terms of things you can control, like training, if you hate lifting weights and you really enjoy running, one, you're wrong, but two, go for a run, like that's fine. Um, but I think that's really important. So for me, going back to the kind of comparisons thing, comparing myself to what I used to lift is bullshit. Whereas what I can do is teach my athletes down the barn and remote programming. Um, like all of my kind of, all the people that I train, be that one-to-one clients, distance clients, shout out Singapore, all the people down the barn, all that kind of stuff that I'm training, I can help them get to competitions and help them get stronger and do it better than I did. So I've, my point I'm trying to make in a very long way around is that I've taken a thing that I feel quite bitter about, which is my own training. And I'm able to kind of shuffle that to a side and feel good that I'm able to get other people away from that route. And they still get the same results, but they do it well. So the, the, the comparison is no longer there, but I've been able to shift the thing. The comparison I made against myself, I've been able to shift that into something positive is what I'm trying to say. Do you think you struggle with the comparison? Do you think it shifted over to your business? You now compare how your business used to be or how it was or how you compare to other gyms or other coaches? Not really, no. So it's so in terms of business, I, I have very I have very strong ideas of where Redbeard is going and what we do. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a thing. And I fully understand that what we do here isn't for everybody. And that's absolutely fine. If someone comes here and says, I don't like it, there's no mirrors, there's no treadmill, then cool, like go find a gym with mirrors and treadmills. There's no hard feelings. If you ever want to drop in and train it because we've got cool stuff, then you're more than welcome. But if I don't have what you don't want, or if I don't have what you want, and I've no intention of getting it, understand I'm not going to bend for you to do that. Like If you want to come down here and pick shit up and have a laugh doing it, then this is the place for you. But in terms of where Redbeard's going, there's a very definite target as to where we're going to be in the next sort of five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. There's very, very clear set of goals in my mind and like written down on paper as to where we're going to be and how we're going to get there. Um, so comparatively, I've run gyms in the past. I've been management. I've ran various bits and pieces and done things and various jobs within the fitness industry that I've had that have taught me lessons to get into where I'm at at the minute. And I've worked in some really, really nice gyms and I've worked in some absolute fucking hovels. And I chose to pick the worst of the hovels, make it a little bit worse. And then that's what I've set up as Redbeard. 
Um, and it works. It does really, really well. It's cool. Um, but like jokes aside, no, I don't compare my business. I don't compare Redbeard to other gyms because as far as I'm aware, there isn't another one, mm. which is quite a thing to say. But I think even in your one, there's a million nutritionists out there that do to all intents and purposes, the same as you, but there's one CB nutrition, mm. same as one red beard barber. We've all got our own individual stance on what we do. And the barn here, one, it's a barn. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the thing. But the barn is very representative of that fact. And everyone that comes down here knows of us as the barn. We're going down the barn. It's a place where people come to have a laugh, lift some weights. There's no bullshit. There's no egos. Um, the cool thing down here is no one cares if you've just come back from the Olympics with gold medals or you've never touched a barbell before in your life. Like, no one's better than anybody else. We all come down there and respect hard work. So if you turn up and you just chill in the corner and you think you're better than everybody else and you do a little bit of ego lifting and you take the piss out of people for trying and not being as good as you, you are swiftly, like, weeded out. Like, all the arseholes kind of take themselves away because they just don't get they just don't get the time of day. Um, I was with someone down there the other week who lifted a 30-kilo Atlas stone for the first time and they've been trying for weeks to get it. And they rung the PB bell and everyone cheered and clapped and hollered and whooped. And it was a massive deal because they've been training for it. So that kind of hard work and the effort that goes into lifting those little rewards. So anybody else, you look at a 30 kilo Atlas stone, 99 people out of 100 people could lift that stone. But then this one person <laughs> couldn't. And they got through it, they picked it up and smashed it. It was awesome. Shout out Emily. Well done. But that sort of stuff, that's what sets us apart. So I don't think comparatively I can set that to another gym. And I'm not saying I'm the only gym that celebrates small victories. That's bullshit. Every gym should celebrate small victories. And I know a lot of them do. Some don't. Um, but comparatively in business, no, I don't, I don't compare myself to other gyms or other people or other lifting clubs or anything like that. We're just what we do. And the people down here are what make this gym. And I think that's true for every gym. I'm not saying, you know, we're the only place with a community because that's not true at all. Um, that's one thing given my utter disdain for CrossFit one thing that CrossFit does quite well is the community side of things better than most yeah 100% yeah so you go to a lot of CrossFit gyms and they have like throwdowns at their club where they'll have competitions and then they'll all go out for pizza and beer afterwards you, you know all that not sort of pizza because it's got carbs in it they'll all go out for they go out for carnival, like, carnival meal no yeah. barbecues and craft beer with mud in it and they talk about the newest Matt, like Reebok Nanos or something I don't fucking know and yeah. they all take their shirts off and high five each other whilst wearing headbands. Yeah. And then smash down a, an RX bar and talk about the latest workout where Big Dave RX Plus did cleaning jerks that look fucking atrocious. Anyway, we're moving on for that. But yeah, that was again that was a real roundabout topic, wasn't it? But that was a but that was interesting what you said about the gym in that you were like, yeah, I don't compare because we're different with yeah. all these different ways. But then and people can see that. But then when it comes to people themselves. Mm, compared to everyone else, they're like, but you're different. Yeah. You started at a different time. You're a different age, you're a different size, you're a different, like, fucking down to the physiology, you're different. Mentally, you're different. Everything's different. You do a different job. You've got two kids, they've got no kids. Like, all that shit's different, but you still compare to that person. Even if it's a person that you're friends with that you're the same in lots of different ways, you're fucking completely different in pretty much every other way. Yeah. You still do a comparison. Whereas if you don't, you just think, well, I'm me. And because of all these experiences and stuff like that, it's much easier to not compare. Even when you're comparing to old you, like things have happened to me in the past few years. Like, that sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> nothing bad. Don't know where he touched you. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing good either. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's just different, isn't it? And like things have happened which change you, and that hadn't happened a few years ago. So yeah, that's why comparison generally is used. Yeah. I also think this, the last year, and again, we're, we're getting, we're going, we're at risk of being a very serious podcast here, so we have to cut yeah. this. But I feel like the last year and a half, like through COVID, has changed a lot of people's perspectives on everything. And like, you're included in everything. So like the perspective I've got on my business, on my home life, on my own training, my health, and everything else around that. Every little thing has changed. Everything. And it's all, I, think, I don't compare my business to where we were before lockdown. Because now we're a different business. I have to I have to operate differently because the law tells me to. Um, and interestingly enough, we're in a better place now than we were before lockdown, which is really fucking cool. So obviously, you know, Boris has done something for me by making me really fucking work for it. But like comparatively, in the last year and a half, everything's changed. Yeah. Literally everything. So I don't know, I guess like the comparison conversation, now's probably a really good time to sort of sit back and 
reflect and kind of, without being so formal about it, plan shit. Like work out where you're headed, what you want to do, where you're at, and just sort of reset and that kind of thing. And that's probably where, and here's where I'm going to plug what we do. But that's probably where a conversation with myself or Charlie, other Charlie, handsome Charlie, would come in handy. Is because if you're looking to just up your game in training or you want to change of activity, you want to try something new, whatever that may be, or you're just a bit lost, you're going back into the gym for the first time in a year and a half and you look around and, you know, the, the one thing that calls to you is Smith Press and a cross trainer. Smith Press? I've gone Dutch again. It's that bottle of Grolsch I had the other day. <laughs> the one thing that shouts at you is a Smith Press and the cross trainer, but nothing else is sort of screaming and you don't really know what to do. Then let's have a chat. Like, let's try and work out what's going on in the gym. Let's work out a program and get you back on track. Or vice versa, if the last 18 months have just seen you supporting local businesses by smashing takeaways every night and doing your bit, as well you should be. Admirable. Yeah, admirable. 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 It's good, yeah. <laughs> That's navel, apparently. <laughs> That's your belly, isn't it? Navel. <laughs> but, like, supporting all your local business. We've got a wonderful Italian near us, and we've supported them a lot through lockdown. A lot. Um, but like doing all that but if you're trying to get your nutrition back on track not that eating Italian food is bad oh here we go there's a, there's, I just opened up a straw man argument there haven't I yeah a little bit but like getting nutrition back on track and talk about that and try and work out a plan through that have a word with the other chap he's pretty good um, where you I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut this I'm going to cut this off here we're at risk of getting very serious we've, we've been talking for about 25 minutes and I feel like we've actually helped people and that's not about what we do that's the worry yeah um, but like in terms of where to find it, if you want to have those conversations, like I don't know about Charlie, I don't charge for those conversations. Charlie's mm -hmm. time's worth an awful lot more than mine, so you probably have to pay him in like a kidney or your firstborn or something. But he'll have a ten minute chat with you. Firstborn's kidney, whatever. It's easy. Firstborn's kidney. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a price. It's good of you. Um, but no, like we'll both have conversations for free. Like chatting's free. So if you just want an air, <laughs> that sounded a little bit like you're selling your body. A little bit. Well, you can talk for me for free, but if you actually want me to do something, <laughs> yeah, you'd have to pay. If you want this, no one yeah. wants. Even my wife doesn't. <laughs> but like, if you just want to air some thoughts or get an idea of where you're going, they're like, just holler. So you'll find me on Instagram at Red Beer Barbell Club. You'll find Charlie at CB Nutrition underscore. We're both on Instagram. Both our DMs are open. Just come and just have a natter. Um, if you want to chat about just random shit, we're more than open for that as well. Like that's always good. I quite like the random conversations. I like the would you rather questions. They're good. Yeah. It was a good one I got the other day. Someone asked me, and I feel this is what we're going to... We're going to veer back to, like, the usual business on this podcast with this one now. It's, would you rather get in your car and have to fight a chicken to death every single time or fight a monkey to death once a year, but you get a sword? Once a year? 100% once a year. And you're armed, but it's a monkey and they're aggressive little bastards. Yeah, but not with no arms or legs once I've finished with the sword. What if the monkey gets a sword? Have we said that? I've seen Planet of the Apes. Yeah, that's true. We don't know if they are. If he's got like, a fucking AK-47, it's game over. <laughs> okay, how many swords I've got? I mean, that's, yeah, no, ah, that's a good point. They never specified if the animal was armed. Mm. Yeah, if he's in a tank and I've just got a sword, then what's the fucking point? <laughs> the monkey's got a chieftain. I'm just in my little fucking Isuzu pickup with a dagger. He's got, he's got Biden's <laughs> fingerprints, the button for the nuclear weapons, and I've got a fucking machete. Brilliant. <laughs> got a butter knife. But then what would the chicken be? Like, I'm assuming, because I'm not armed, the chicken's unarmed. But what if the chicken's wearing, like, chain mail or, like... That's chicken. an assumption, though, isn't it? You can't assume. The okay. chicken could be armed as well. And you've got to fight every day. You get tired of that. You get fucked when Yeah, you get really tired. Also, I'd never eat chicken again. Or I'd eat, I'd eat nothing but chicken as a show of strength. I'd eat it in front of it. Yeah. <laughs> Just pull up outside. That's what I do to people like you. <laughs> Just, like, don't kill the chicken yet. Just gaffer tape it to your seat and then drive through KFC. Make a car out of chicken. Surely it's an example. Like, mess with me, I'll fuck you up. <laughs> like, you know the Flintstones car is made out of old dinosaur bones? Yeah, like. literally that. Brilliant. I mean, I feel like we've just lost all of our vegan listeners and anyone that has any sort of link with kindness to animals. Because we've just, we've just cut the limbs off a monkey and we've gaffer taped a chicken to a car seat. Mate, it's trying to kill me. I'm all for people having their ethical views, but if it's coming at me to kill me, <laughs> I'm not lying down because we need to save the chicken. 100%. 100%. There's, there's a story I could tell, but I won't. About, yeah, probably. Yeah, I, won't, I won't tell that story. It's going to upset a few people, so I won't. It's a good story, though. I'll tell you off it. It's good. Oh, um, tell me, yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> and then on the next one, you can say, yeah, he definitely shouldn't have told that story. Yeah. Um, I'm going to wrap it up there. But yeah, so like I say, in terms of vitamin D, if you're on vitamin D supplements, keep taking them. If you're not, maybe take them. They might help. 
that's probably as much as we're going to get from that. And then in terms of comparisons, stop fucking comparing yourself to people, like, or yourself. It doesn't really matter. Oh, um, people just turned up, so I said, hey. Um, so all that kind of thing is just kind of nonsense. Hopefully, we've had this and kind of covered all of that off and it's been helpful and that kind of stuff. Um, I feel like the most important one in this is if a chicken fucks with you, tape it to your car seat and drive through KFC. There you go. Sorted. That's, that's the underlying lesson for today. Um, like I say, you'll find me, if you want to have a chat about training, you'll find me at Redbeard Barbell Club on Instagram. If you want to chat with Charlie about nutrition, it's at CBNutrition underscore on Instagram. And I will try, <laughs> I'll endeavour to get another one of these maybe next week because I feel like we do these every week, every month. Definitely, maybe. Yeah. Good. We're going to keep this nice and vague. But Charlie, I will see you soon. And valued podcast listeners and YouTube subscribers, I'll see you soon. And I'm going to say soon is probably within the next year. I will yeah, definitely see you in the next year. We'll get one of these done then. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks again, mate. Thanks for your time. Thanks, mate. <laughs> and I will speak to you soon enough. Cheers, dude. Yeah. Bye. -bye.